Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be ranking all of the Jeffree Star eyeshadow palettes from my favorites to my least favorite. If this is something that you are interested in, then make sure you keep on watching and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. In the entire community, I think Jeffree Star is probably the most controversial beauty guru, if that's even still a term that people use. Uh, maybe influencer, that might be a better word, or just mogul as Shane Dawson calls him because that's truly what he has become. He has transformed himself from somebody who used to be on MySpace, who used to perform at different concerts around North America, to this person who now owns this makeup empire and he is creating I think some of the most innovative products out there. And so I thought to help you guys out, especially in anticipation of the new Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star collaboration, I thought I would go through some of the old Jeffree Star palettes to some of the newer ones and let you guys know where I would sort of place them from my most favorite and adored palettes to my least favorite ones. I have certainly invested a lot in the Jeffree Star brand. I love his liquid lipstick formula. I think it is one of my favorites out there. I have a ton of them. They're housed back over there <laughs> where my makeup collection is stored. Um, I also have several of his eyeshadow palettes palettes and I don't have all of them because not all of them appeal to me exactly and obviously I'll give you my reasons for why they don't but I have purchased several of them that I do honestly enjoy using so so much and so without any further ado I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about probably some of my least favorite Jeffree Star palettes and we'll build up to the best ones at least in my opinion and yes for anybody who is wondering I do have the blue blood palette on my eyes today I did film a mini tutorial of this look so stay tuned for that and also follow me on Instagram because I do post a ton of makeup looks and mini tutorials there the palette that I'm gonna put at the bottom of my list as least favorite palettes from Jeffree Star is probably his original palette which is the beauty killer palette unfortunately I no longer have that palette I did order it when it first launched and I thought it was gonna be one of the best palettes out there I hadn't seen anything else like it and I think that's why I really wanted to get my hands on it plus I was so curious about the type of formula that he was gonna create especially because I believe he was one of the first really big independent brands to come out with a vegan as well as cruelty free line and as you know all of his products are vegan and cruelty free and I think that appeals to a lot of people these days and so for all of those reasons I thought I would go ahead order the palette and see if I liked it but when the palette arrived I dove into it immediately I started swatching I started playing and the palette was just okay <laughs> I really appreciated that the pan sizes were gigantic I mean they were huge gigantic squares compared to a regular MAC eyeshadow I think they were almost double or triple the size like that's how big they were there was lots of product in there I think you got really great value for the dollars that you spent on the palette but unfortunately at the end of the day the colors just didn't really appeal to me I think in total I swapped the palette twice I wore it on my eyes once and then it gathered dust in a makeup storage bin until I finally donated it to a friend who was really passionate about the beauty killer palette unfortunately for me that's a palette that is probably my least favorite of all of the Jeffree Star palettes out there and right next to that palette close to the bottom is the androgyny palette again this is another one and I'm just gonna pull it up on my screen here that it it's nice I mean again it's similar in format to the beauty killer palette but I think it was trying to give people more of a neutral look the beauty killer palette did contain some brighter and bolder eyeshadows which not everyone could probably use and so when he came out with the androgyny palette I remember him saying he wanted to create something that the everyday person could easily use and wear 
I know lots of people who love this palette because of the colors that are incorporated in it, but I think he was still tweaking his formula here. It wasn't exactly perfect, very similar to the Beauty Killer palette. It swatched nicely, but it still didn't have that smoothness to it that I come to expect from shadows. And so, you know, for me, that's a palette that I just couldn't invest in and it just really didn't call out to me. It's going second last just because I think the color scheme is a little more uh, wearable than the Beauty Killer palette, but because of the same formulation, I just thought, meh, it's, it's just okay. Not for me, but maybe it's suitable for others out there. Following the Androgyny palette, I think I would put the Alien palette next. Again, this is one that I think I really needed to see in person to confirm whether or not I wanted to bring it home with me and so I had gone into one of my local Morphe stores I looked at it in person I swatched it in person and while it swatched beautifully and some of the colors really were nice and it was a lot more neutral than I think the cover or the packaging I should say initially led you to believe it just wasn't a palette that I really wanted to bring home. I didn't want to spend upwards of $60 to bring home a palette that I think I would use maybe two colors from. I mean, I really like the two greens and that neon yellow shade is kind of cool too. But, you know, aside from that, I just couldn't really get on board with that palette. The other thing I didn't really like about it is the packaging itself. I mean, I can always appreciate somebody who does custom packaging and who tries to create something really different and, and something that you know doesn't exist out there but it's just a weird shaped palette and when you think about everything else that you probably have in your collection that is shaped like the jawbreaker palette for example it's not going to store really well so again for that reason I just ugh. I did not like the palette and I didn't want to bring it home, but I don't think it deserves the bottom and second to last spots. I think it comes in like a third to the last spot appropriately. I am probably going to get annihilated in the comments below for the palette that I'm going to put in the next spot. And I'm putting it here because for me personally, it's not a palette that I would use because of the colors in it. They're just a little too red for me. And of course, I'm talking about the Blood Sugar palette. As soon as Jeffrey premiered his launch video for this particular palette, the world went crazy. It definitely was a palette that didn't exist out there with the color story that it did come with. Um, for me, I couldn't really get on board with the amount of reds and pinks and sort of really light nude colors that were in there. I did like some of the purple shades. I loved the packaging. I thought the packaging was just, again, something so different, but I didn't think it was a palette that I would get a lot of use out of. And and again, that's why I'm ranking it where it is because it's just not well suited for me. But the formulation of these shadows is wonderful. I was able to play with this in the Morphe store. I felt it, I swatched it, everything swatched and looked beautiful. And I don't think I've heard many negative reviews, if any, about this particular palette. So it's done quite well. Unfortunately, it's just not one for me that I need in my makeup collection. Now that we're climbing close to the top of the palette pyramid, you're going to begin to see palettes that I use quite a bit because I really enjoy the formulation and it took me a while to appreciate a pressed pigment and to learn how to work with a pressed pigment. But once I got a good grip on that, I was able to really enjoy the Jawbreaker palette. Um, this one here is the mini palette and it is going next just because I think the color story is a little limited. I mean, I do enjoy that it's got more purple in here. It's got a nice hit of orange. Again, some really, really gorgeous colors. But I don't believe this is a palette that can create unlimited looks. But if you do want a small Jeffree Star palette to just start playing around with his formula, I think this is a good one to add to your kit. I think this palette is good, but it's not as good as the gigantic 
gigantic jawbreaker palette. So this is the full size and I absolutely adore adore this palette because of how many colors and options you have in it and that's primarily why this one is coming in my top three in third place in particular. Like the mini jawbreaker I think there was a bit of a learning curve to using these particular shadows mostly because a lot of them are pressed pigments and I have found the best way to wear a lot of those shadows is to just attack them in place get the pigment where you want it to sit on your eyes and then only blend out the edges because if you do start over blending pressed pigments they do lose their color and their vividness and you're just gonna have to keep on packing the shadow in order to get that back so again a little bit of a learning curve but man these colors are so so good this is a palette I do bring out quite frequently and yes, it's probably looking a little intimidating because of how bright some of these colors are, but don't be fooled, they are incredibly wearable. I also really like this one because like the Jawbreaker palette, it is made of cardboard, it's a lot flatter, and it's really easy to store. And I can also tell that there was a lot of thought that was put into the packaging, the design, um, the embossed Jawbreaker on top, the splashes of paint and all of that. I mean, it's just a great palette. Coming in second place, and believe me, this was a surprise because I was not anticipating liking this palette as much as I did. When I first saw this one online again during Jeffrey's launch video, I just kind of thought, meh, it looks okay. The colors are just a little bland for me. And I wasn't super thrilled about the middle row of colors because of how gritty they just look. And with this particular palette, I wasn't able to see it in store first. I just had to order blindly online and hope that I would enjoy it. But one day I decided to pull the trigger and I thank my lucky stars I did that because this is no longer available on Jeffree Star's website as far as I know. It is, however, still available on Beautylish. And I'm talking about the Thirsty palette. Oh my goodness. I think this was one of the first larger Jeffree Star palettes that he created for one of his summer collections. As neutral as this palette looks, you can do so much with it. I love these bright pinks up here. I love this middle row now that I've come to appreciate it a little bit more and I've learned how to wear these colors. At first, I actually didn't like them because there was so much fallout. They were super gritty to the touch, but I learned to create looks. I learned to use glitter glue, which did take me a minute to get on board with. Um, but once I did that, I could really appreciate these colors. The only one, and I'm going to say this in this video, that I think needs a little bit of building and it doesn't come off as pigmented as I would want it is this color up here called Taste Buds. It's just a very light neutral pink color. Maybe that was done on purpose so it can be super wearable for everybody, but personally I would have liked to see a little more punch with that color, especially because the other colors have really great great punch to them. Of all the colors in this palette, Filthy Rich is probably my favorite favorite. Uh, this is the color that I wore pretty much all summer if I was wearing anything really glittery or shiny on my lid. I was using these two colors quite a bit. I was using Splash and Submerge. I used Quench a few times, but this color here was the perfect topper to so many looks. I wore it on my birthday. I loved it. It stayed on all day. I didn't get any fallout, and yes, I used a glitter glue. Um, it was just amazing. And again, I really appreciate the packaging mirror. It's flat. It stores really well. It's just a solid palette. And for me, that's why it's coming in number two. And coming in at number one, which is probably no surprise to anyone, I I think I kind of alluded to it at the beginning of this video because it is what I am wearing on my eyes today. And through your fantastic powers of deduction, you know 
that is Blue Blood. The Blue Blood palette is certainly one of my favorite, favorite palettes. I think this is so unique and different from anything else that I have in my collection, from the packaging to the formula to the layout. I think this is just an amazing palette. The packaging is a little bit bulky, as you guys can see. It's a uh, rather large, a little bit challenging to store. It does need some extra room. It's got this clasp here that you open Open. There's a beautiful mirror in there and then of course the colors in the palette. The color story in general of the Blue Blood palette really really speaks to me. I love the shades of blue. I think they are quite wearable even though some of them can be super bold. You don't necessarily have to do, I mean even what I did today with my look. I think you've got a lot of neutral colors in here that can be worn on a daily basis. You've got these beautiful nude colors, some more pastel colors down here, a frosty white, and then of course your bolder sort of blue colors and metallics over here. Some of the metallics are a little on the crumbly side like Ocean Ice for example which does have glitter infused in it. Um, I think that's probably the crumbliest color in this particular palette but as long as you do your eyes first before your foundation you're going to be perfectly fine don't you worry. This palette is just amazing. I think all of the mattes are delightful. Um, the one that kind of gives me, I'd say, probably the most problems is the color Blue Blood. I just don't think it's super pigmented. Um, it does go on a little bit patchy and it really takes me a while to work with. I don't know if it's because of the shade itself and it being a tough formulation to create, but it's the only problematic shade in here for me. Um, I can certainly work with it. It. I've learned how to work with it and I mean this palette as a whole is just oh, so good to me and there is no doubt in my mind that this should take the top spot as the best Jeffree Star palette out there. As we know with Jeffree Star there is no stopping him and his creativity. I think there's going to be so much more to come from his brand in the future and as we all know on November 1st he's launching his Shane Dawson collaboration and I think the large palette and the mini palette are going to sell out so quickly, it's going to be insane. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I have been anticipating this palette for a while. I've put money aside for it. Yes, I have saved for it over the last couple of months. I've really slowed down from purchasing a lot of makeup. I'm only buying things that are incredibly unique and stuff that really speaks to me. And that's one of the palettes that I think really speaks to me in particular. So I am definitely gonna pick those up or so I hope. I'm not quite sure how all of this is going to pan out, how crazy it's going to be online. Um, I might even go to my local Morphe store in person uh, to pick it up as long as they actually have it in stock. If you've had a chance to play around with any of the Jeffree Star palettes, let me know in the comments which one is your favorite, which one or ones do you have in your collections, and overall, why do you like them? Overall, I really like the Jeffree Star Cosmetics brand. I love the liquid lipsticks, I love the eyeshadow palettes, and I really, really, really love the lip scrubs. His eyeshadow formula in particular I think is so unique. Again, I appreciate the fact that it is vegan and cruel free. It's made in the US of A, which I think is also pretty cool. And his packaging is something to be admired. It is so different from anything else that exists out there. And for that reason, uh, not for that reason alone, but <laughs> that is one of the many reasons why I am choosing to invest in this particular brand. And I think that's going to do it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know the drill. Give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can always do that by following me on all of my social media, which I will link for you in 
the description box below. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you are all having an amazing day no matter where you are in the world. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!